How's it going everyone? Ben here and today we're going to be talking about can waterbending healing powers actually work in real life? And I was thinking of doing a super fun video that's also pretty trendy and I'm a huge Avatar fan so this was kind of really fun to do all the research and to showcase to you so uh, that's why I'm doing it. In the show Avatar The Last Airbender and its sequel The Legend of Korra People have supernatural abilities called bending, which allows them to control the different elements, fire, water, earth, and air. And within each elemental bending powers, there are subsets of specialties. And within water bending, there's a specific type of subspecialty called healing powers. So a lot of water benders, primarily females, are trained in the avatar world to become healers and use their water bending as a source of healing energy and to basically cure people of wounds um, that's the most common thing we see but there's also other really ancient forms such as changing your body temperature which was featured in the spin-off books specifically the one uh, featuring avatar kiyoshi now i'm very much aware that elemental bending is purely a fictional thing but the nerdy medical student in me likes to always find the medical physiology behind supernatural abilities and that's what i really want to do today i want to look at water bending as an art form in avatar the last airbender series but also look at how it could actually be medically accurate slash inaccurate so Let's get started. Like with all fictional works, usually the manifestation of waterbending and the waterbending tribe comes from actual history. And most of the inspiration of waterbending comes from tribal communities that actually is, exist in our world. So most tribal communities usually have a designated healer within that community that heals people. They were kind of like the old doctors back in the day. Before doctors existed, these tribal healers would use alternative medicine and herbal medicine and natural medicine to help heal the people in their communities, and they were regarded as very wise healers. That's one of the origins of the creation of the waterbending tribe. Also, a large majority of the history of Avatar centers around the fact that most waterbending healers are women, and it was prohibited for men to learn the art of water using water bending to heal others and that is a very i would say binary tradition but this kind of tradition existed in many many different types of cultures throughout the years actually cisgender women were viewed as healers in many cultures and i'm not going to go very very deep into those cultural roots because i am not an expert on culture i'm looking strictly at the medicinal side but a lot of these healers like i've said used herbs plants and other forms of medicine that we that actually western medicine uses a lot of to heal their local tribal members but another huge origin of the art of using waterbending healing powers comes from the Japanese art of Reiki. Now what Reiki is, is that it is a Japanese form of alternative medicine called energy healing. Reiki practitioners use a technique called palm healing or hands-on healing through which a universal energy is said to be transferred through the palms of the practitioner to the patient in order to encourage emotional or physical healing. Now there have been extensive studies on Reiki and what Reiki actually is and whether or not it works and a lot of studies have actually shown that Reiki can help with chronic illnesses such as pain and anxiety. However, it really depends on who is the patient and whether or not the patient is willing to accept Reiki as a form of healing for them. I actually had Reiki done on me and I remember that being as a pretty surreal experience. I saw a bunch of flashing lights when I had Reiki done on me, but I am not the kind of person that benefits from meditation or um, healing arts, uh, like relaxation arts and other forms of more, what I consider static sitting down and self-reflection kind of arts. I'm not really 
good with that because I'm kind of all over the place in my head. So Reiki really didn't benefit me, but the other people that I did Reiki with, um, the more tranquil people and the more accepting people and the more people willing to accept Reiki as a form of healing got a lot out of it. So I do acknowledge that Reiki does have its purpose. And especially when I used to work as a hospice volunteer, a lot of elderly people who live in hospice situations actually do benefit a lot from Reiki. That's how I ended up actually having Reiki done on me because a lot of patients liked Reiki. Uh, they offered a basically a seminar for people who are taking care of the patients to experience what having Reiki done on you is like and that's how I got to experience it and I honestly saw it as not a harmful thing as long as you don't go too into the fact that maybe Reiki can cure you of really mal illnesses such as cancer as long as you're not that kind of person Reiki can be very restorative especially with certain conditions such as anxiety depression this was actually confirmed by one of the creators of Avatar The Last Airbender Brian Konietzko in a 2014 Q&A when one of his fans asked hey is Reiki one of the inspirations for waterbending healing powers and he responded with Yes! Exclamation point. So it's actually pretty cool seeing that Reiki has its influences on waterbending healing powers, but waterbending healing goes beyond mind and spiritual healing. It goes into physical healing, such as really big open wounds. I mean, we see waterbending as a way to heal major injuries, especially injuries that can cause really debilitating things to happen to you, such as open wounds, shoulder dislocations. I mean, Cora helped Bolin heal himself after he sustained an injury while he was competing as a fire ferret in season one in The Legend of Korra, but Katara also helped mend her own hands when Aang accidentally burned them, but also healed Aang when he suffered multiple injuries. I mean, waterbending healing has incredible properties that go beyond its roots in Reiki and alternative medicine, both those things take a very long time for someone to heal from. So what medical basis do we have to show that waterbending can actually heal things very quickly? Well, if you look at waterbending healing as a whole, it's not just using water to heal someone. I genuinely think, based on what the creators of Avatar said, that chi energy is used to do part of that healing and every individual person has chi and water bending healing is a way to manipulate that person's chi to accelerate healing however that obviously has no medical purpose or logical fact behind it but there are ways that we can interpret this to be more medically sound so whenever someone has an injury our body's physiology is to increase inflammation in that area. A lot of people see inflammation as a bad thing. However, I will try to negate that and say that in most cases, inflammation is actually a good thing as long as it's not a chronic thing. Acute inflammation is used as a way for our body to rapidly heal from an injury. I mean, we're thinking blood clots, we're thinking scar formation, all of that is driven by an inflammatory process and we need that to happen. And one of the main ways that actually happens is through water. Whenever you sustain an injury, immediately your body's chemoreceptors and chemokines work together to release a bunch of chemicals that signal water, blood, to go straight to the source of that area. I mean, that's why you, we have bleeding. But along with bleeding, that blood carries essential nutrients that allow you to heal. Within our blood, we have many cells residing in it that acts very quickly whenever there is an injury, when that water rushes through that injury site. When I say water, I mean blood, but you know, I'm trying to center around water bending. When blood rushes through that site, there's going to be a lot of cells there, such as neutrophils to fight bacteria and infections, but also macrophages to eat up any residual bacteria that have died after the neutrophils have disintegrated them. But also there are things like fibroblasts, which deposit collagen and stimulate scar formation. So if we really want to think about water bending as a very acute way to heal wounds, we can think about wa using water bending as a way to stimulate blood flow to that area of injury. And when that blood flow goes there, so does the nutrients and the cells we need to facilitate healing. The more blood flow there is to that area, the more cells that there is going to be and the more action that's going to be taken 
to facilitate the repair process. I mean, I honestly don't know how much faster water bending could increase the level of repair, but at the same time, it does sound medically sound. Well, that's it for what I have on my medical reasoning about how water bending would work in a medical physiology sense. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you liked it. And I hope you are a nerd of Avatar like I am. Be sure to like, subscribe, share this video with someone who would find it entertaining. And I'll see you all on the next one. And maybe if you guys really like it, I might make more videos like this covering other forms of media and other forms of medical fallacies and justifying certain mystical things and fictional things in the medical lens. Anyways, I love you all. This is Ben.